Pakistan still reeling from the effects of the country's worst flooding in history. Reports say the damage is equivalent to 30 million or more Americans being displaced. It's sure to transform Pakistan. Think about this. The textile industry accounts for 60 percent of Pakistan's exports, and more than 20 percent of its cotton supply has simply washed away. Some say there's something America can do that would help Pakistan recover and achieve more prosperity. Perhaps enough prosperity to prevent radical Islamists from converting more terrorists. But America has not taken this step. We protect American cotton and textiles instead of buying them from places like Pakistan, which rely so completely on those crops. In fact, America is one of the largest protectors of its farm industry behind the European Union and Japan. So why else are we the number four exporter of rice? We actually grow it in the desert because taxpayers in America fork up, fork over up to $30 billion a year in cash to American farmers. So here's the question. Are American farm subsidies keeping third world countries in poverty and are they fueling extremism in countries like Pakistan? Ben Powell is an economics professor at Suffolk University. He thinks it's time to end American farm subsidies. And here to make the case for them, why they make sense, is Roger Johnson, president of the National Farmers Union. Good to have both of you with us. And obviously it's a, it's a challenging issue on many fronts. Let me start uh, with you. Ben Powell. Uh, a U.N. report recently said that if America got rid of its farm subsidies, just America, uh, we would lift millions of people out of poverty around the world. Uh, why is it that we provide uh, subsidies to protect American cotton farmers uh, when those in Pakistan uh, are, are, are literally not able to sell their cotton? It's typical pork barrel politics in the United States. U.S. farm subsidies are not good for the U.S. citizens. So it costs taxpayers money. It raises consumer prices in many cases. Often, as you point out, sometimes it hurts producers in third world countries. Cotton's a good example, actually, because we get about 35 to 45 cents per pound on the world market, but about 70 cents of subsidies. In fact, the California desert, where they produce cotton in one place in the United States, the farmers there pay 20 to $30 a foot acre for water for water that costs 200 to $500 to provide. Of course we can have a cotton industry in the desert, but it makes no sense because it costs more to do than the value it creates. The same way we could have a vegetable industry in Alaska if we provided enough greenhouses. It just doesn't make sense. Roger Johnson, can you make the case uh, for why this makes sense, and in particular why America should be the number three or number four, depending on whom you ask, rice exporter in the world? Well, you know, there's a couple things we should back up and understand. First of all, there are about a billion people in the world who are hungry. The vast majority of those, in fact, are farmers, mostly subsistence farmers. One of the worst things you can do is to put policies in place that are going to move markets higher, make them more volatile, because the small amount of production that they produce that's for sale for cash income actually goes down when you have sustained low market prices. The reason for subsidies in this country is because they help to support some sort of stability in agriculture. The United States is the, has the most affordable, the most abundant, the safest food supply in the world. And there's virtually no argument about that. Americans spend about 10% of our disposable income on food. No other country comes even close. And we would argue that a large reason for that is because we have policies in place that encourage farmers to produce and in many cases to overproduce. Now, consumers want overproduction. That tends to push markets lower. But markets getting pushed Roger, we pay lower 10 also of our puts income. farmers out of business. But isn't part of the reason we only spend 10% of our income because we are, we are wealthier? I mean, our incomes are bigger, so we're going to spend a smaller amount on food. Of, of course, of course. But that's the point here is that the system that we have in this country is a very stable, productive uh, efficient system of food production. Nobody Listen, else comes close to Benjamin, us. Benjamin, does he have an efficiency. argument there that, 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 that there's stability uh, that's Aaron, provided but, by the U.S. farm subsidies? Listen, this was an argument for socialism in the Soviet Union was that they were going to eliminate the business cycle and provide stability. Stability by itself is not good. What we want is long-term growth and prosperity. And this is one thing that drags it back, just like the attempt for stability there did. And, and it's not, and it's not the, about stability. Let's look at and the pushing the prices it, down. Of course look at, it is. When we, look at, when we look at what this program is really about, the Department of Agriculture estimates that 30% of the subsidies go to 6% of the producers. It's about what, corporate welfare for big farmers. Some industries like sugar, it's even worse. 42% of the subsidies go to 1% of the producers it, there. You know, it's it, all about would moving you money to the that some of these family. groups it, it are unfairly protected? This is really unfair. I mean, in sugar, we don't even have taxpayer dollars going into subsidies. Of course not, because you make barriers so other country. people can't sell their products here. But, but hold on, but Roger, in, in sugar, we here. do pay 
more for our sugar than other countries because we do allow it and to be produced here. We also have a very stable, By tariffs on the others, we don't pay for it, but the other countries sugar. do. We have a stable supply of sugar anyway. What we do is we make the U.S. price of sugar twice the world market price you by know, putting limits on other people putting in. That's why your Coca-Cola is made sure. with corn syrup here and not sugar like it is everywhere that, else. Okay, final word to Roger. What you're really making here is an argument for getting rid of everything and letting the free market rule. Here's the problem with that. Russia just put an export embargo on all the products that they're raising for agriculture. Why? Because they're worried that their folks are going to go hungry because they had a drought. Two, three years ago, we had the same thing where we had literally dozens of countries around the world put export embargoes on the commodities that they were producing for fear that their own people were going to okay. face these enormously high costs. We can't have that system. Ben and Roger, we we'll have hit to pause have there. Two very interesting sides of this story. We're going to continue to follow this because it, it is important uh, for a place like Pakistan, which uh, due to farm policies around the world uh, has issues selling and, and therefore uh, perhaps more people in poverty than otherwise would. We're going to keep talking about it, find out what the U.S. can or should do about it.